No. No, no. 6-1-B. There we go. All right, we are going to talk about direction angles today. Okay? And we're going to be given angles in two types of direction, but there's only one kind that's a directional angle. So let's start with that. Direction. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? All right. All right, so let's say that you have a vector, okay? So let's go ahead and draw a vector real quick. Uh, let's draw it in a different color. So here's vector V, okay? There it is. And we would like to write vector V in its component form, okay? And its component form is going to involve its angle now. See, there's a directional angle. The directional angle is going to be the angle that is formed from the x-axis to your vector. For example, this angle here could be 45 degrees, pi over 4, whatever radians or degrees, it doesn't matter. But that is theta. Theta is the direction angle of your vector. I don't mind if theta is positive or negative. Some books like you just to do positive, but if I'm over here, let's say my vector is over here in quadrant four, I think that's a much easier angle to find than to go all the way around. So it's up to you. It, I won't mark you wrong if you write it, but it does have to come from the y-axis, or from the x-axis. That's the important part, okay? <laughs> it has to have a starting point of here and go either direction. Now. The um, component form of vector V is equal to is equal to the magnitude of V times the cosine of that angle, theta of your directional angle, bless you. Uh, magnitude of V times the sine of theta. Okay, this is going to be very important for what we're doing today, right there. Now, if you had a unit vector, let's call it u, and we took vector v, yeah, oh, and we took vector v and we made it into its unit vector, which means we would take the magnitude of v cosine theta, the magnitude of v sine theta, and how do we find a unit vector? What do we divide it by? You did this last night. Magnitude. It's magnitude, yes, perfect. To find a unit vector, you take a vector in component form, you divide it by its magnitude. And look what happens. When you divide, those will reduce. And you end up getting that a unit vector is simply cosine theta, sine theta. And you know what? You should know that. Because all unit vectors land on the unit circle. And if I were to say, like for example, have a vector that is at a 45 degree angle and it's on the unit circle, then this is simply cosine theta sine theta, right? Isn't my x and y coordinates just cosine of that angle and sine of that angle? Rad 2 over 2. So my component form would be rad 2 over 2, rad 2 over 2. When I, when I asked you to evaluate, what's the sine of 45 degrees? you would go to 45 degrees and you would go to the y value there. That's what the vector is doing too, okay? All right, so here we go. We're gonna do um, three kind of problems to get you warmed up before we do the hard ones. Do you need a minute to catch up? Yeah, but this is the most important part of today, right here. When it's not on the unit circle, you take its magnitude times cosine of theta to find the x coordinate of your vector and then you take magnitude times sine to find the y part. All right, so here we go, number one. And you're gonna need your calculator for this, and they're not gonna come out to be nice numbers, and that's okay. We are going to find the components, find the components of vector V, of V with a directional angle 
directional angle of 115 degrees and a magnitude of 6. Okay. Find the components. Vector V with directional angle of 115, magnitude of 6. Let's say you get to the test or quiz or whatever on Tuesday. Quiz is Tuesday. And you, you like, forget everything. Okay. Well, you do know trig, right? You do know what degrees are. So 115 degrees um, is going to be the vector that starts at the x-axis and opens up to 115. So here it is. Right there. That's 115. And our job, what we're trying to do, oh, and then the magnitude, so the length of this vector is 6. And our job is to find the component form. We basically want x and y, right? That's what we're looking for. In a component form, we write it like this, though. So we're looking for x and y. If you forget that, it's just simply, okay, if you memorize it, then this right here would be 6 times the cosine of 115, comma, 6 times the sine of 115. Okay, I just gave you that formula. Okay, if you forgot it, though, let's say, oh, no, uh, what was that formula? I don't remember. Well, what you can do, you can just simply draw yourself a right triangle. That's what the, all these come from. And you would figure out what this is, and you'd use right triangle SOHCAHTOA. Right? What is that? That's going to be what, 75? 65. 65, right? Yes. 65 degrees in here. So if I wanted to find out what y is and what x is, I would simply do a cosine of 65 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, guess what? Okay? It's the reference angle for 115. Now, then I need to realize that y is positive and x is negative and make sure that you adjust that, okay? All right, but if you remember the formula, then, you know, that's nice because all you have to do is just plug this in. So did you plug it in? All right, make sure that you're in uh, degree mode. So we're going to go 6 times the cosine of 115. So this is negative 2.54. We'll round to two decimal places today. And then we'll do 6 times the sine of 115, which is 5.44. Okay? And that's the component form. It's like I'm at over here at negative 2.5, and, and I'm up here at positive 5.44. And that's how I write it in its vector component form. So it's just trigonometry. It's just SOHCAHTOA. But if you, like I said, if you want to memorize that formula, that's one little step easier, I think, if you can't. Okay, now we're going to go the other way, number two. We're going to be given the component form, <coughs> and you have to find the magnitude and the directional angle, okay? So here we go. Find the magnitude and direction angle given, vector, given a vector, okay? So let's do this. Um, let's do two of these. Let's do one that is negative 2, negative 5. Let's do this one. This is going to be in quadrant 3. So we want to find its magnitude, which you already know how to do. You did that last night in your homework. And now we're going to find its directional angle. Okay? So let's talk about what we're finding here. So we have this, mag or this vector that's over here at negative 2, negative 5. Here it is. Here's my vector. And I need to find the length of that vector and its directional angle. Now, remember what its directional angle is. Its directional angle starts at the x-axis and goes all the way around to here to make sure that you tell me that you're in quadrant 3. Okay? I'm going to show you what's going to happen because your calculator is not going to give you that angle. So, we make a triangle out of this. And this is negative 5 and this is negative 2. And then to find its magnitude, um, so we want to find the magnitude of this vector. You did that last night. That would be the square root of, can you do that in your head? Perfect. Square root of 29. 
Okay, so that's the length of this. If you forget the definition or formula for magnitude, just use Pythagorean theorem. You remember that one. You know, everyone knows that one. And then now we have to find the directional angle. Here's how you find the directional angle. You're going to find the reference angle that we talked about way back in chapter four. Okay? And I have opposite and adjacent. And what goes with opposite and adjacent in a right triangle? Tangent. Very good. So the tangent of theta prime, it's my reference angle, is opposite over adjacent. And then to find out what theta prime is, you want to tan inverse. <coughs> tan inverse negative 5 over negative 2. Okay, so you go to your calculator. You know where tan inverse is. It's right above tangent. So tan inverse of 5 halves gives me 68.2 degrees. Is that the directional angle? No, it's not. That angle gives me a vector in quadrant 1. My vector is clearly in quadrant 3. So what am I going to do? Perfect. I'm going to add 180. Add 180 to this. So my directional angle will be 248.2. Okay? And, yeah? Can you explain that again? So 68.2, that's in the first quadrant? Well, yeah. 68 degrees is an angle in quadrant 1. But my angle that I'm looking for to tell me which direction my vector is going is over here in quadrant three. Okay. So what I really did was I found this angle in here to be 68. I got to add 180 to it to get me to quadrant three. Okay, and if like it was in quadrant four, you'd add 270? Um, it depends. It might give me a negative angle. So let's do one in quadrant four real quick. I was going to anyways. <laughs> All right, so let's say that we are at... Um, so is that one theta prime up there? Um, theta prime is 68.2. That's this angle in here, theta prime. And then theta would be the entire directional angle. Like if I told you, hey, guys, my vector goes in the direction of 68.2 degrees, you would draw it in quadrant one because you know 68.2 degrees is quadrant one. But my vector doesn't go in quadrant one. It goes over here in quadrant three. So I got to adjust that by adding 180 to it. OK, let's do another one. Number one, we'll go one and, um, I don't know, negative three. OK? One, negative three. So we're going to be in quadrant four. So let's see what happens in quadrant four. So we want to find the magnitude, and we want to find the directional angle. So the magnitude of this vector. I'll just call them all vector v. The magnitude would be what? Um, uh, not quite. Oh, Red, 10. Red 10. Perfect. So it's negative 3 squared is 9. 1 squared is 1. Add them up. Red 10. OK. I always like to draw a picture of these. That way I can see like where it's at, what angle it's going to be in. You know. So I'd go 1, 1, 2, 3. Here's my vector. And I'm looking for its directional angle, which goes all the way around. But I'm not going to find the directional angle. I'm going to find the reference angle by using SOHCAHTOA here. Reference angles in here. Okay? So this right here is negative 3, and this is positive 1. And bless you. And I'm going to use tangent again. Tangent of theta equals opposite, which is negative 3 over adjacent. By the way, tangent of theta is always b over a, or y over x, right? Sine over cosine. So, OK, so then take the tan inverse to find out what the angle is. Tan inverse of negative 3 gives me negative 71.57. Now, personally, I'm OK with that. Some books are not. Some people are not. Um, that tells me the direction from the x-axis. That's the correct angle. Some people like it to be positive. So I'm okay with either that or to get the positive angle, I would actually add 360 to it because it's negative, And I would be at 288.4 degrees. Okay? So either or. But... I wouldn't accept 68 for that other one because 68 is not that same angle. Okay? It doesn't get me there. Yeah? Wait, how did you get 
Um, so this is negative 71. What I did was I added 360 to it. Or you can think of it's 360 minus 71.57. It's all the way around except for that part right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to apply these in the next part. Are you ready? Part B, we're going to do some applications of vectors. These get a little tricky. Application. All right, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about a vector velocity and vector speed. So velocity is a vector. Velocity <coughs> is a vector because it has both magnitude and direction. Right? Have you taken a physics course? You talk about velocity, it can go up or down, negative, positive, or negative velocity is a vector because it has both magnitude and direction. So these are just vectors. And I think you actually use vectors when you talk about velocity in physics. Now, the speed, though, the speed that a vector is going is just the magnitude of the velocity. Magnitude of the velocity, not, not the direction just the magnitude. And speed is always positive. Even if I'm driving out of my driveway, I'm not going negative five miles per hour. I'm going five miles per hour in a reverse direction, okay? You get in your car, you drive in reverse down the street, you're not going at negative speed. Speed's always positive. And speed is always, you know, the magnitude. And magnitude is always a positive number. All right, so let's start with an easy one. We'll just break it in here, here we go. Number. Three, I think, yeah, number three. All right, it says here that a DC-10 jet, I don't know why it has to be a DC-10 jet, but let's say a jet is flying at a bearing of 65 degrees. So a jet is flying at a bearing, now I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, of 65 degrees at 500 miles per hour. Pretty fast. Find the component form of the velocity of the airplane. Find the component form of the velocity of the plane. All right, I'll let you catch up. A jet is flying at a bearing of 65 degrees at 500 miles per hour. Find the component form of the velocity of the plane. Now, think about bearing. What happened? It starts at the top. Yes, it does. Good, I'm glad you remembered that. Bearing, 65 degrees is not a directional angle. Bearing <coughs> always starts from the north. Remember that? We did that in chapter four. I know it's been a whole, like, like a month or two since we've seen this, but bearing, comes from this direction here, okay? So you can't just take it's 500 miles per hour times cosine of 65, 500 times cosine of 65. You can't do it that way. Um, so let's talk about what you can do. So if 65 degrees is from the north, because that's what bearing is, um, but we want to find the component form. What we're looking for is this, AB. And we have that formula. Remember the formula that I gave you? Which is uh, magnitude cosine of theta, magnitude sine of theta. That's what we're going to use for this problem. But we need to have the right magnitude and we need to have the right theta. The magnitude we have, I told you what magnitude is. What is the magnitude in this problem? 500. Magnitude is the speed. Okay? So I'm going to do 500 times the cosine of what? Yes, 90 minus 65, which is 25 degrees. I need the directional angle instead of the bearing angle to do these problems, okay? That's the trickiest part. Um, so I would do cosine of 25 degrees and then 500 sine of 25 degrees. And then you go to your calculator 
and you figure it out. Here we go. 500, cosine 25, 453, uh, 0.15, and then 500 times the sine of 25, it's 211.31. Okay, and that's the direction that the airplane is flying. It's traveling 453 in an eastward, eastward? I don't know if that, eastward, <laughs> eastward. Eastward and 211 northward is what they say. Northward, mm -hmm. it says that right there. Speed, I know, at a speed of 500 miles. So you found the, the vector that the plane's going up. All right, so that's the easy one. Let's do a hard one. Number four. <coughs> okay. Um, I don't know why, but they give you the, her name and where she's flying from and everything. It says here, pilot Megan McCarty's flight plan has her leaving San Francisco International Airport and flying a Boeing 727 due east. There is a 65 mile per hour wind with the bearing of 60 degrees. We're going to find the compass heading that McCarthy should follow and determine what the airplane's ground speed is going to be, assuming that the speed of the airplane is 450 without the wind. Oh, dang. It just got real. Okay, so here we go. Let's, let me break it down for you, show you what's going on. I'm going to draw a nice big old picture for you. Here we go. So here's the airport in San Francisco, and Megan, she's flying... Um, a big old plane, 2727, and she needs to fly due east. So she has, she's supposed to be flying here, okay? But there's a wind. There's a wind that has a bearing of 60 degrees, 60 degrees from the north. There's this wind here, <coughs> and the wind is going, and eh, that's not really 60 degrees, is it? Let me write, let me, let me redo this. 60 degrees from the north is more like here, huh? Yeah. All right. So that's 60 degrees from the north. And so what's happening, can you picture this? If you're supposed to fly due east and this wind is coming at you, isn't it going to push you up this way? Yeah. So she's got to adjust for that. You know what she's got to do? She's got to really aim her plane more in this direction here. So that the wind will then, see here's the wind, the wind's going to push her plane so that she is going due east. And we have to find, what they're asking for, is we want to know what her bearing is going to be. We need to find that angle there. And we also need to find the speed of the plane with the wind, so that would be the magnitude of this vector here, the blue one. We need to find the magnitude of that. All right, let me uh, label some things for you, okay? We are going to call this uh, point A right here. And then this will be B. And then they put C up here, and this is D, okay? And these are all vectors. They all have a direction, and they have a speed to them, okay? So let's talk about what, what all of these things are. So A, B, which is in green... A, B is the airplane velocity. <coughs> the airplane <coughs> velocity. Okay? That's what she is going to go. That's where she's going. <coughs> now, A, C, which is in red on my paper, A, C is the wind velocity. Remember, velocity is a vector. Wind velocity. And then AD, which is in blue, AD is the resulting velocity of the wind with resulting velocity. It's the wind acting on the plane. It's both of them. And I don't know if you could tell. Maybe you could or couldn't. Um, it's actually AD is going to be <coughs> vector AC plus vector AB by using that parallelogram law that we learned a little bit, right? I know it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but if you were to, yeah, mine doesn't really look like a parallelogram. It's not really drawn really that great. But what happens is it's the addition of them, 
It's the diagonal of the parallelogram. So in order to find out um, what all of these things are, we're going to use all of their bearings and their speed and all that, and let's go ahead and put everything into place now, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's find out what all of these component forms for all these vectors are. So let's start with AC, the wind. That's going to be the easiest one to do. AC in its component form, so we're going to find AC, we're going to find AB, we're going to add them up to get AD. So AC is, ooh, I kind of ran out of room there, hold on, is equal to um, its magnitude times its directional, angle, the cosine of its directional angle for the first component. So its magnitude, what did I say the wind was going? 65 miles per hour, thanks. 65 <laughs> times the cosine of what? 30. Thank you. Yay. I was glad. I'm hoping you were going to get that. 30 degrees. Okay? Don't forget, you have to think of the wind as its directional angle in a 30 degrees right here. <laughs> this is 30. Okay. And then comma, uh, 65 times the sine of 30. All right. We'll just hang on to that for a minute. Everyone okay with that so far? Yeah? All right, now let's go ahead and figure out what AB is. So AB is equal to, now I said AB, the plane, this is how she's actually flying. She's flying in this direction. The plane is going 450 miles per hour. Yeah? Where's 65 coming from? The speed of the wind, I didn't write it down, I probably should have, but this is in your book. The speed of the wind is given as 65 miles per hour, okay? And then also, you're going to ask me, where did this number come from? The speed of the plane is 450 miles per hour, miles per hour, okay? Now, do you see how the wind is acting on this plane? It's pushing it, and it's actually making it go faster, too. Did you notice that? Can you picture that? All right, so let's go to AB now. AB is going to be 450 times the cosine of, you know what? I don't know. We don't know this angle yet here, this directional angle. I'm going to call it theta. I'm going to call this angle right here its directional angle because it starts at the x-axis and goes to vector AB. I'm going to call that theta, um, just theta, okay? And then comma, 450 sine of theta. All right. And now what I have is I need vector AD now, the last one. AD is the resulting vector. It's to take these two vectors and to add them up, okay? Um, but you know what? No, I think I'll just add them up. Okay. So it's to take AC plus AB. So we're going to do 65 cosine of 30 plus 450 cosine of theta, comma, uh, 65 sine 30 plus 450 sine theta. All right, so now we need to figure out what that is. Well, guess what? AD is flying due east. It's flying exactly east. And that's a really important part here. Because if it's flying due east, then that means that when you think about its vector here, that means that the y value is going to be what? Zero. zero. Okay? So that means that this right here is equal to zero. Don't forget, these are like, they're basically points. I know we always forget that. This is a, b as a vector, but it's also the point a, b. And if I'm on the x-axis, then my y value has to be zero. So this right here equals zero, and we can solve that. So. Let's go ahead and solve this. We have 65 sine 30 plus 450 sine theta equals 0. Okay, and it's just an equation to solve. You can use your calculator. 
Um, we're going to subtract 65 sine 30 to the other side. Minus, I'll just do it on my calculator, 65 sine of 30. That gives me, oh, right, sine of 30 is 1 half. Duh. So it's a negative 32.5 divided by 450. I get 0 0.07. Don't be alarmed. You have to take the sine inverse at the end. Oh, shoot. Oh. 32.5 divided by 450. Take the sine inverse of your answer, and you get 4.14. So I had, oh, that was a negative, huh? N a negative 0.4. Negative 0.72 or 0, 072. So then theta equals negative 4.14 degrees. All right, we're getting there. You're like, where are we going? No, we're here. We're like doing this. This is exciting. So that tells us that we can now find everything else. Okay? So let's go back and ask, let's, let's say, okay, what are we looking for here? I'm looking for two things. I want, first of all, I want the directional angle of the um, airplane. So here it is. The airplane has to go here in order to go due east. And so that angle is what? My bearing I should take is what? Anybody guess? No? Yes? 90, 94.14. See this angle right here we just found is negative 4.14. So the bearing that this green vector needs to take is to add to 90 because it's coming from the north. So that's the bearing. Okay, now we need to find the actual speed of the airplane. So the actual airplane is going due east. We need to find the magnitude of this blue vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the magnitude of it. Well, where is it? It's right here. Here's the component form of this vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the component form of AD so that we can then put it into the uh, magnitude formula. So AD is equal to, um, do I need to write it out again? Do you want me to write it out again? Yeah? It's 65, and you can put this in your calculator, cosine 30 degrees plus 450 times the cosine of negative, uh-huh, 4.14. And then remember what the other component was? Zero. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what that is because that looks like a big old mess there. Cosine 30 plus 450 times the cosine of negative 4.14. And I got 505.11. So the component form is 505.11 comma zero. And if I wanted to find the speed of the plane with the wind, it's just going to be 505.11 because I take this and I use my magnitude formula. I square that. I square the zero. So that's not going to matter. So then I take the square root of the squared and the plane plus the wind is going 505.11 miles per hour and my plane, I should take a directional angle of 94.14 in order to fly due east. Whew, that's a tough problem. Hardest problem of the day, we just did it. Um, uh, we are gonna do one more. It's a little easier, it's the same kind of thing. I wanna show you kind of again, it's a little easier though. And I did take off a problem. Um, you can skip number 46. <coughs> It's about gravitation and this box that's sliding down a thing and it has to do with force and we don't even have time for that. Yeah. Um, how did you get 94? Okay. So right here, I got that this theta that I'm looking for, this angle here is negative 4.14. But my airplane, see this is the plane right here. This is what Megan has to take. So we need to figure out what her bearing is going to be from the north. So this is 90 degrees, and this is 4.14, and you put them together, and it's 94.14. Um, why is it the bearing from the north? Bearing's always from the north. Uh, 
directional angles from the x-axis, bearings from the north. Oh, so yeah. it's always going to, we always have to add 90? No. Oh. Depends on what quadrant you're in. You, if you draw pictures, you'll see what you need to add to get there. If I was over here, I would need to add 180. If I'm over here in quadrant 4, I would need to add 270 to whatever that angle is. So it depends on what quadrant you're in. Um, yeah, so I, I hope you guys kind of understood the problem, right? An airplane's flying, needs to fly this way, but there's a wind that's coming at you at 60 degrees, and it's a fast wind, and it's pushing. So if I started off going east, I would be up here. But I need my plane to go east, so I have to adjust by going below that so that the wind pushes me to where I'm supposed to go. Yes? No? You don't think they use vectors? You don't think they t the pilot's sitting there with his vectors? They have a formula. I bet the formula uses vectors. I bet that it's all computerized, and they probably punch it in to what the speed is and all this stuff, and they figure it out. I bet they don't have to punch it in. No? They just, oh, the, the, the plane knows it? Yeah. Anybody want to be a pilot? That's no? Austin. That would be cool. Austin does? Oh, yeah. That's cool. OK, one last problem. Here we go. Number four. Five? Five. OK, number five. We're going to talk about fish. What kind of fish do you like? Do you like to eat fish? Yeah. What's your favorite kind of fish? Halibut? Halibut? Goldfish. Goldfish. <laughs> mahi mahi? Well, this is about salmon. Do you know anything about salmon? Yeah. What do you know about salmon? Salmon's all good. They're good. They taste delicious. What do they do, though? Upstream. They swim upstream. They do. They're, they're, they're they swim awesome. upstream. Okay, here we go. It says, suppose. Salmon's not good for you? No, they're like all like farm fed. Oh, that's the kind I like. Oh, dang. Suppose a salmon, Tim Salmon, is swimming. <laughs> suppose a salmon, who, you know Tim Salmon? Yeah. Yeah, personally? Angels, there you go. All right, suppose that uh, salmon is swimming six miles per hour. Dang. Um, <laughs> um, and the current of the stream, the current of the stream is flowing at three miles per hour. Okay. At an angle of seven degrees. At an angle of seven degrees. The current. The current. The salmon's going straight upstream. And the current's coming out. You know how currents don't just go straight down. Sometimes they kind of, yeah, they go to the side. All right. It says, how fast is the salmon actually swimming? So how fast is he going? How fast is the salmon swimming? And you're like, he's swimming six miles per hour. All right, but he's got a current coming against him. So he's not actually going six miles per hour after that current's hitting him. Right? He's trying to go six, but the current's pushing him back. We're going to find out how fast he's actually going. Okay, so here we go. We're going to draw a picture of this. I'm going to draw the salmon in red, because salmon, you know, it's kind of a reddish color. It's salmon, right? It's salmon color. All right. Here's my salmon going upstream, and he's traveling at a speed of six miles per hour. Okay. And I'm going to call this C and I'm going to call this A. And so the salmon, his vector is CA. I was going to write AC, but that's wrong. <coughs> From C to A. All right. And then there's this current coming at him at seven degrees. Okay. Seven degrees. Now, this is how they drew it for you. It went like this, and they drew this as seven degrees here. So he's swimming, and the current's coming at him, OK? We want to find out how fast he's actually going, which is the resultant vector. We want to find this right here. So let's label some of these points. So that's A. This is B. So AB is the water. I should have written current, but I didn't. AB is the water. And then what I want to find, my result, I really want to find CB, but I want to find the magnitude of CB. Okay? 
All right, so let's talk about what each of these are. So let's look at vector um, AB first. <coughs> vector AB is the water. And we're going to write AB in its component form. Okay? So the component form for AB, um, how fast is the current going? Three, right? So it's going to be three times the cosine of its directional angle. Now the current directional angle is not seven degrees. It's actually this angle here, which is negative 83. Okay, negative 83 degrees. So the current is three cosine, negative 83 degrees, and three sine, negative 83 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead Put that in our calculator, beep, boop, beep, boop, and you get uh, 0.37. I did this one earlier. 0.37 and negative 2.98. All right, so that's the stream. Okay, now let's talk about our salmon. So if we have A, B, and we have C, A, all we have to do is add them together, and we'll have the result, okay? So uh, C, A... Uh, you can look at it a couple different ways. He's going exactly up, right? Exactly up. You don't need to worry about directional angles when you're going due east, due north, due south. You don't need to worry about it, okay? His component, if you were going to look at him, here's, here's his x, y axis. Where's he going? What's his component form? Straight up, and he's going six miles per hour. Zero, six. Perfect. Look how easy that is. Let's say you didn't realize that. You didn't see it, okay? You could have done six times the cosine of 90 degrees, which is zero, and then six times the sine of 90 degrees, because that's what his directional angle is. Oops, is right here, 90 degrees. It's going straight up, okay? And which is one, so you would have gotten zero, six anyways. But if you just look at the picture, you can kind of skip some steps. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to find out <laughs> The resultant, CB, is going to be to add those together. And so we get 0 plus 0.37 is 0.37. And negative 2.98 plus um, 6 would be, what, 3.02. OK? And so now we need to find the speed of the fish Let's find the speed of this. So let's find the magnitude of our vector that's in green here because that's the resultant vector of the fish swimming with the current coming at him. So we would do the square root of 0.37 squared plus 3.02 squared. You go to your calculator. Let's find out how fast this fish is going. It's so exciting. Have you ever wanted to find out the speed of a fish before? Not yeah. until today. Oh, you have. Oh, good. I got 3.04 miles per hour. Wow. He's really slowing down from that current. There it is. I mean, that makes sense. I know, right? That's why I like these. 